Hey everybody, we're going to talk about the Mars 3 Pro today. A while back on my channel we did a review of the Mars 2 and then Ella Goose sent me this Mars 3 Pro along with some standard resin and I did my usual thing where I do an unboxing and then we get into settings and print file setup and stuff and of course this video will have all of that. Uh, but while I was doing that on my group chat at work, uh, we have some miniature painters uh, who were really interested in getting into resin printing. So they were like, hey, can you print out these files for me so I can see the quality? And that took me down the rabbit hole of like, hey, I want to kind of make my own miniatures. This is really fun. And this is a great printer to do that. And I printed a bunch, of, for me, I printed a lot on this thing. Usually what I'll do is I'll, you know, print the standard files. I'll throw one of my files on there and print it and then call it a day. But on this thing, I printed a bunch of test files uh, for other people. And then that got me into going onto my live streams and setting up my own miniature files. We go through and we pose out, you know, a little Rancor. And then I went through one of my complex organic sci-fi armored reptiles and combined all that, shrank it down just to kind of do not really a stress test, but just to see what kind of quality I could get out of, uh, you know, going from that type of file, which wasn't really modeled for miniatures. It was, you know, it was just modeled for, you know, whatever. It was just a fun project. But then to see how the detail holds up uh, when I printed out miniature size, and not only, you know, the size of a softball down to the size of a baseball down to the size of a quarter, basically, um, you know, how it would hold up. Uh, and of course, once you get that small with that amount of detail, that took me down the rabbit hole because, you know, the miniature painters, they're like, hey, if you want this stuff to pop, you get, you know, go in there and prime it up because there's a little bit of a subsurface scattering effect with the raw scans that you can't really pick up on video. So it's like, okay, pick up an airbrush, prime it. Now I'm starting to go that gateway hobby from resin printing to miniature painting. Uh, I can see myself sort of drifting in that direction. So it, we'll, we'll see. But uh, I did put a prime coat on there just to see if I could pick up some of that detail because uh, it is pretty astounding. I would, and it's all default settings too. I did try a little bit with like three microns, different resins, but the basic resin that was sent, the ABS like, along with the five microns, it, it, it printed out great. The detail really held up. It really popped. Uh, build plate leveling was easy. Uh, so I'm finally, I think I'm getting the hang of 3D printing. This was a really fun machine to work with, really super easy to set up, pretty standard as far as 3D printers go. Uh, of course, it's got the 4K uh, mono screen. It's got the built-in uh, carbon filter, really nice build quality. Uh, I'm still using the original FEP that came with it. After all that printing, the FEP is, you know, really, really in good shape. So all in all, excellent. Have no complaints about anything with this machine, the quality of the prints. I'll let you decide and hopefully the video was able to pick up enough of that detail. It's different to hold it in your hand and look at it uh, with your little microscope lenses. And yes, I did even get one of these things just so I could go in and see uh, the detail that I was printing. So I don't know. It was a fun project. I spent a little more time and money than I was, ex was expecting. But uh, at the end of the day, again, super fun to play with, get a lot of really good detail at scale. So again, I'll, I'll quit wasting your time, we'll go into the video. So here's the ABS like polymer resin, gray. Shake up the bottle before using, wear gloves and mask when using, keep away from children and dust. Here's the power cord. Here's the tool kit. So here we have a mini air purifier. Go ahead and pop this off. Here's all the tools you need to tighten and tune and some extras in there. Trimming our prints. Here's the second half of our power cord. Here's for popping things off our build plate. Here's for very gently cleaning or scraping the little resin bath, again, very carefully. Here's some gloves. Here's some filters for the resin. Here's some masks. And here's a little USB for our files to transfer over to the machine. The machine itself, the user manual. The build platform. Here's the resin tank. Here's a 4K screen. Go ahead and pull this off. And the little indents go in the front. And one more thing in the bottom, extra FEP film, which is going to be this right here. Here's the 4K screen. You're gonna to wanna to peel this off before printing. I guess we can go ahead and do that. And even on here, 
here's peel this off before printing as well and again this is the extra FEP film for this Alright, I'm just going to be following the instructions for the setup, so we're going to go ahead and pop this off here. On the bottom here, you're going to see there's little feet that come off the bottom. So you can actually put this down without, you know, anything touching your FEP. And when you go to set it on here, it's going to fit right into those little notches, so really easy to get it in there correctly. And of course, there's your max fill line. You don't want to fill beyond that with your resin. Here's our build platform. We're gonna go ahead and plug this in. We're gonna take our piece of paper, put it underneath the build platform and the LCD. Go ahead and turn it on. And we'll go ahead and loosen these screws. We're gonna to go to tool, manual, home. And then we're gonna tighten this back up. Point one. Now you can see there's some resistance here. I'm gonna go up one more. There's not quite enough resistance. So we're gonna go down one. Once this is good, we're gonna hit return. We're gonna set zero, confirm. Let's go back to manual, set it to 10 millimeter. We'll go ahead and raise this up quite a bit. And we'll go back, tool, exposure, next. And you should see the exposure working just fine. We're gonna put the resin tank back in and tighten the screws. Actually, one thing I do wanna mention, I probably cut this from the earlier thing, but I had, I had bought these originally, two little extra carbon filters you can put inside of here. However, the Pro version comes with a USB powered carbon filter. So what you can do is, if I tilt this forward a little bit, a little space for this, there's a little plug with a little USB on here and you can just take this carbon filter and plug it right in here for some built-in carbon filtering. You see when I plug it in, it turns green, it's powered on, the little fan inside is going. And at this point, all you need to do is raise the platform up a little bit more, pour your resin in, put this back on, and you're ready to print. I'm gonna put it into my printing closet, but for now, that's the basic setup. So here we've got an array of files, you know, just a handful that we've made over the years in our live streams. And if you want to see how these are put together, for example, you know, this has the little key registration and the booleans taken out so we can slide all the little parts in there. Same thing with this Rancor. He's a little, uh, we posed him out using uh, proxy post. He's just a Dynamesh. We enhanced his details using proxy mesh as well. And like I said before, his, his little foot will fit right down in here in this little base here and this little base will fit in this generic holder. So again, in our live streams, we talked about how to make all of this, uh, you know, having fun in ZBrush. But let's go ahead and get all of these things out of ZBrush so we can throw them into our Elegoo Mars 3 Pro printer. And because we're printing on that printer, I've gone ahead and put in this build volume in here. So if I turn on transparency, you'll see this is them all relative to uh, this build volume. Of course, you can always scale these objects once you're in the slicer, but it's also nice to have your source files at the size that you want them at just uh, as a frame of reference. So we're gonna go over here to our Z plugin 3D print hub. And under here, under export options, I'm gonna change it from all to visible. You can see all the subtools here are named appropriately. So I'm gonna go ahead and say update size ratios. Everything is in this range of millimeters. So I'm gonna go ahead and say okay for that one. And we're gonna to go to export STL files. I'm going to throw these into a print folder. I'm gonna say save and then choose choice number two. Use the subtool name as a file name. That's gonna export all these STL files very quickly. There we go. And now we can go into your slicer of choice. If you're using the Elegoo Mars 3 Pro documentation, it probably sends you to ChichiBox, which of course you can use. Uh, all you gotta do is just drag your STL files right in here. And I've already printed out the Earthworm Jam. I'm gonna not gonna bother doing that again. So right off the bat, I can go through here and select his torso, his hands. I'll go ahead and reprint out his head just for fun. Uh, the gun we already have. Then I can go through and select all these. I can say go ahead and arrange these. And you can move, scale, and rotate them individually if you'd like. 
and again just move them on the build plate speaking of the build plate uh, you want to make sure you're using the correct build volume so you would go over here to settings first thing you should do is go into settings uh, you can see you can add any printer you'd like right here under you know any any number of manufacturers are all in here but you can go through select your printer and the cool thing about that is not only will it set up the machine with the correct settings also your print will be set up to use probably the correct setting for your resin of course you can change any of these settings that you'd like to suit your needs so we've got our build volume here for our mars 3 pro we've arranged our objects here uh, if you want to you can go through here and you can you don't have to hollow everything but if you'd like you can go through here and say for example let's go ahead and hollow these dice out so i'm going to click that one and say hollow it out tell it how many millimeters that'll go through and hollow it out of course if you do that you do want to dig some holes in here so we're going to say add a hole and luckily we have uh, these little dice holes in here so i can just go through and click that'll dig a hole right into the dice and you probably don't want just one hole you want a couple so i'm going to go ahead and add a few if i if i want to i can change the uh, size of this hole so we'll just dock that down to three millimeters and eh, maybe 3.5 there we go perfect and we'll just put a hole in this side once we're done with that again i'm going to select all of these go in here to supports i'm going to click this plus all And as you can see, when we go through and slice through here, it added internal supports to our dice, so pretty cool. That'll catch all the areas it needs in order to print these things out and have it stick to the build plate. Uh, once you're done with that, we can go back here to our settings, say slice up this file. And again, here's your exposure settings. As it's printing out, it's going through and exposing all of this, these white areas to your resin. So it's going to print out upside down and then it's all gonna be on the build plate. And if that's all looking good to you, you can go in here and hit save. And then, of course, save it as a CTB file or a Chichu Box file. And if you've been on my channel, you've noticed that I've probably used Lychee Slicer more. In fact, I've got a whole playlist if you want to go check out Lychee Slicer. This is a little bit dated. There's some new functionality uh, that's in there, but it's, it's enough to get you started if you want. Uh, the process is still the same, though. You just drag in your files here. And just like before, I don't need the body or the hands i've already printed those out and if you see any uh, in here that are red you can just click them say repair 3d model that'll repair any holes that might be on the model and if you want to select your objects you can just click and drag or you can go in here and select them uh, individually it's up to you but you can just click and drag you can just say arrange all and then continue to set these up just like you did in chichu box and i'm probably going to speed through this part but you can see me go through the different stages of setting this up uh, to print on the Mars 3 Pro. And here you can see we've done the hollowing process just like we did previously. However, one cool feature is you can go here and it'll say objects need an update. There's a suction cup detector, so you can go ahead and search select it. And obviously the, in, the, the middle of all of these objects are gonna be suction cups technically because we haven't poked any holes in them yet. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and grab holes. So for instance, over here on the dice, uh, I already have holes in here, so I can go through here and just punch a hole through. And then when I run this up, you'll see the hole is punching all the way through the object to the inside. And obviously you don't wanna just put one hole in there. I'm gonna put one over here on the opposite side too. And another cool thing is I can hit the space bar and then I can go through and scale this down, move this around very easily. So now when I do a search selected on this one, now you can see that suction cup area has been uh, reduced considerably. And just like the other program, I can go through here and add, you know, say I want to do like medium supports over here underneath auto. I can say generate automatic supports. It'll do internal, external supports. It'll parent and bracket them for me. Say OK. And you can even go through here. Honestly, all of these look fine, but if you wanted to go through here and add some heavy supports just to make sure that you know it's all secured you can go through here and select supports and you can toggle if you want them light medium or heavy and another really cool feature is if i go over here to manual of course you can set uh, manual supports there's a whole lot of control you can do so for example i go over here and do medium however i can also click and drag and that'll add supports at intervals so in this case the interval is set at two millimeters And you see, I also have a uh, use shift key on. So if I you know, start a selection here and then hold down shift, I can put a straight line here. So we just click and click. 
Um, I'm going to set the interval to two millimeters. And again, just tap and then shift click. Of course, if you want, if you prefer, you can actually make these light and change the interval back down to, you know, one millimeter. So, you know, in fact, let's do that. Let's give that a shot. I think this one will print out fine. We'll do light supports with a smaller interval uh, for the die. So again, we're just going to click here, hold down shift and we'll put in, we'll over crank the light supports here. Of course, when you've done that, you can go through and you can select all the supports. And again, while we're in manual, you can go ahead and parent them. Say OK. And then you can add some bracings to add strength. And there we go. Another really cool thing we can do is we can go over here to Island and we can do a search selected. And that'll highlight any islands we have that we may want to take care of. Uh, you can go through here and you just kind of look for them. And if your area is a little bit crowded, again, you can go back here into objects and you can turn everything else off except for what you're working on. So for instance, right in here, there's a little uh, red dot. Now, instead of going through here and just dropping in um, a support, what you can do is you can hold down Alt, you can click on the support, and then you can go and click on another support and parent it or anchor it. Uh, but you also have these mini supports. So if I hold down Control Alt and click and then drag over, you can see we can put a little mini support out from here. And you can use mini supports to you know, create your own brackets. So if I go in here to these light supports, if I want to put a bracket in between here, again, Control Alt and tap, and then just put a little support in between these if I want. You can change them to light, medium, or heavy. And again, here's another little island that we found. You can go through here and search, by the way, too. You can hit show, and it'll show you where your island is. And again, if that's our island, we can control alt click here to here, put in a little light mini support. Let's go to the next one. One here right on the nail. I can also hit, uh, just select one of these, hit space bar, and that puts me into editing mode. So I can actually go through here and move any, any component. I can move scale and rotate, so I can move the base around. I can move the mid, the tip, I can even go through here and scale the mid base or tip as needed. Again, just by hitting spacebar, I can go into that mode. So a lot of really cool functionality here. But again, for the end of this nail, if I was want to uh, move this over and then again, hold down control alt and then put a little mini support over and get rid of those islands, update the supports as needed. Let's go ahead and turn everything else back on. And once you're done generating your supports, you can select all of them. Actually, you may not have to select all of them. You can actually go in here to raft and choose any sort of raft that you want. Uh, I tend to do this just a shape, but of course you have a whole bunch of other uh, different cool options in here if any of these speak to you. And of course you can change your raft settings over here. Once we're done with this, we're ready to export. So I'm gonna hop over here to export. There's a lot of really interesting things you can do over here. So for instance, you can go in here to at scale and you can see what scale you're actually printing your stuff out at. You can go in here to simulator and you can simulate your build plate lifting out of the resin vat and this is how your print will actually come out of the resin here's just a picture of the slices and then the supports are in orange and the models in white of course when you send this file over everything will be in white because that's what you're hardening the resin with here's a slice as it goes through your model and then of course here's just your object you can go through there and look at all your hollows and your holes and stuff like that. So again, when we're ready to do this, we can say export slices to file. We have a CTB file selected. You can go in here and do any number of anti-aliasing options. I'm going to go ahead and just leave it at the default. Again, we're using the Mars 3 Pro. If you look over here, you're going to see an estimated time, two hours, 40 minutes. You can estimate the resin volume right here. And I think we're good to go. So let's go ahead and say export slices to file. I'm just going to call it assortment, hit save. And that'll generate our file that we're going to copy onto a thumb drive and take over to the printer. And here we'll just say open folder. So here's our assortment. Here's our thumb drive. Go ahead and delete this file that's already on there. I'm going to take my assortment and copy it over. I'm going to go plug this in and print it out. So of course, safety first gloves and mask and eye protection always and before i turn it on i'm gonna go ahead and take the lid off and here's my resin vat here's my build plate and i like to do a little uh, ptfe lubricant on here you can see i've already got some on there maybe but 
I'll do another reapplication real quick. And again, it's just microfiber. Put a little bit on here. Again, not required, just something I do. And I'll put this right back on here. I'll screw it back in. We have our carbon filter plugged in to the USB back there, so that'll fire off as soon as we turn this on. Which, speaking of, we'll go ahead and power this on. USB filter's kicked in. Resin, give it a good shake. I go ahead and hit it with a heat gun to get rid of the bubbles. Go in here to print. And there's something on here because we haven't put our USB in yet. There we go. There's our assortment file. We'll go ahead and click that, hit play, and then I go ahead and start printing. All right, so the print is finished. We're gonna go ahead and take the lid off. Go ahead and remove the build plate here. Printed fine. I'm gonna go ahead and just use the, uh, I'm gonna use this, you know, since we did the raft and it's easy to kind of lift off, there's not really super welded on there. Uh, I can just use this little lightweight one to kind of just get underneath that lip and then just pop these off. You can just find a little edge and then lift. And we'll go ahead and put this lid back on. We can go ahead and turn this off. And I'm gonna go ahead and remove the supports. Uh, it looks like I'll just be able to kind of just pull these off. Of course, if you need any help, you can get the flush cutters or a pair of tweezers. And of course, being extra careful around ends of fingers, ends of teeth, that sort of thing. Probably get your tweezers out and just kind of pull. And for pieces this small, I'm just going to use my uh, pickle basket with isopropyl alcohol. Give these guys just a little quick wash. All right, uh, so everything came out looking really good. Let me see if I can get it in focus here. Uh, and again, the scale on these things is super tiny. I'm going to get some better photographs of this so you can actually see all the detail that it actually picks up. And I also want to reiterate that, you know, when I was hollowing this stuff out, these things are at such a small scale that I don't think I really needed to hollow these out for any particular reason. You could definitely print these things out without hollowing them out and having to, you know, put in holes or anything. These are super duper tiny, but, you know, just to kind of shoot just to kind of show off, you know, the process is basically why I did that. So as you can see, super nice, super sharp detail. I'm going to go ahead and put these in the, in the curing station. Here's the gun. And of course, once you're done with this, you could go through and you could sand stuff down or whatever you want to do. Um, and you know, these, you know, you put the supports back here where you're not really going to see where they are. You can go in and you can fill these little uh, dimples in with resin and then re-cure with a little UV flashlight. You can sand all that stuff off. This is going to be where the back of his hand is, so not overly concerned about that. You know, keep the nice areas, nice areas nice, sand down uh, the registration areas. But yeah, successful print. Here's the two bases. So, you know, the, this base goes inside the generic base holder, and then his foot goes here. There we go. Foot goes right down in there. So we'll go ahead and put these in the curing station, and I'll get you some nicer pictures. All right, we finally got our prints and I've done multiple sizes for a lot of these. So here's, let me see if I can get both these in the frame. I'm gonna leave this uh, chapstick here just for scale reference, but here's uh, the bigger one. Here's a slightly smaller one. And you see on this scale, these details hold up insanely well. I'm, again, I'm gonna get photographs, but even the little vent, there's vent lines in here on the vents. And this thing wasn't really modeled to be printed at scale. It was just something that, let me go ahead and move this. It was just something that I had available, so I figured I'd go ahead and print it. But uh, even the hex patterns on here, everything shows up insanely well. I don't know that I'm really getting it on video all that great. You know, but like I said, I'm going to get some shots of these, get some turntables of these, and uh, do some primer on there. The skin detail is insane. And like I said, this one here in particular is about yay big. And then I've got the smaller one here. It's kind of... This might have been actually before I did the contrast pass. So in ZBrush, in my live streams, we went through and talked about how to use the proxy pose in order to kind of crank up uh, the surface detail and make that more, there we go. Actually, this one probably is uh, contrast cranked. You can really catch those uh, hex patterns on there. And again, the skin detail is really popping on him. And he's relatively small. There, there he is next to a chapstick. And then we went another level. And I've got these little, just for fun, again, these weren't really constructed 
are originally modeled with the idea that I'd be printing these out, but you can see how well the detail holds up, even this little handle, anything that's broken off uh, was just because I was using my uh, meat paws to kind of pull things off so I wasn't being overly or as careful as I should have been. Um, but again, really astounding how well the detail holds up, even at this size, which again, I wouldn't, I wasn't really modeling to print at this scale, but the fact that it holds up, I don't know, maybe I don't have to worry about that so much. We'll see when I prime it and if I ever get into painting miniatures, if this level of detail actually helps or hurts, but the fact that you can do it sure uh, allows you a little bit of leeway as to what you can create and how you want to create it. You can see the necklines here. You can even get the hex pattern on here on the shirt there. Uh, pretty crazy. Moving right along, here's the, here's the pair of rooks. And honestly, I'm probably going to not be printing out any more printer samples just because when they print them out, they want them to be all one piece. And then these things end up getting really stuck to your build plate and are really difficult to remove. I prefer a nice raft that you can just go in and wiggle off and call it a day. But you know, if it's, it's fun enough to kind of print these out, it kind of puts it through its own stretch test. Here's the, let's see if I can get the Mars Pro. There you go. There's the Mars 3. Again, super crisp, super nice, really well formed and about that scale. Here's the Earthworm Jim from our live streams that we printed. So again, this gun fits right in his hand. Go ahead and put his head in here, but you can pop his head right in there. Glue that right in there. Glue that in there. Last but not least is our little army of Rancors. These models, were a, these models were a little bit simpler as far as the detail goes, but again, we used proxy pose to scale it down, pop the detail a little bit, and then our live stream, we went and posed it out, you know, just from a very simple sculpt to the final print. Again, picked up a lot of surface detail, little wrinkles in the elbows here, and again, these are, these are pretty tiny, and of course, we've got the base. I haven't done any sanding yet, but you know, this would be the little custom base you fit in here. You could swap these things out. Again, super fun, super easy. And uh, I didn't have the scene file set, so you can see they're all at slightly different scales, but uh, all generally head to foot and about the 40 millimeter scale. Again, detail holds up astoundingly well. And again, super easy to print. And same thing with the Oogie Boogie dice. Uh, this one I probably could have went through and popped the detail a little bit more. Uh, but again, very clean print. Got all the little sharp details in there. And totally usable. 